Hello, this is Jeff Neville for Selective Imagery. Today's video is called Where's the Birds? And this is a very difficult video for me to do as well as probably the most important video that I'll ever do. And if I end up with the guts to put it online, uh, then you'll be listening to me right now. I got into birding when I moved down to South Carolina, largely in part due to the wild, the, the wide variety of birds at Hunting the Beach State Park in South Carolina, roughly 30 minute drive from where I live. Uh, Moz Man, who you may know, uh, joined me there um, last week to take some pictures. And uh, the park is experiencing some problems. Uh, basically, lack of birds. Now, one can argue whether that is due to the avian flu, um, climate change, uh, management practices, or what have you. But the bottom line is um, May of this year is not the same as May of last year or the year before. And there are some things that have been done that I think have contributed to the lack of bird sightings or a complete turnaround in the types of birds that are present at the park right now. I'm going to show a lot of video that I shot today. Um, on May 16th. I'm going to show some pictures that were taken in May. In one case, one image was late April. Um, but showing what was there, what was typical, and what's there now. There, um, it's really upsetting to see how it is right now. Um, when I go there, believe it or not, I, I do get approached. Uh, people see you with a the camera, they go, you're a photographer. I go, yeah, I'm a photographer. Uh, of which there are nowhere near as many there now taking pictures as there was, say, six months ago because of the uh, conditions and what we're seeing. A lot of people just don't want to go anymore. Um, there are several ponds in the uh, state park, one in particular called Mullet Pond that you see when you first drive into the park. You'll have Mullet Pond on the right, which is brackish water. You'll have actual marsh on the left, which is obviously uh, saltier water because it leads out to the ocean and it, the height of that water level changes with the tides whereas the pond side can be controlled in terms of the water level. And for whatever reason, the park has decided either on their own or having been directed by other people to lower the water level considerably. This has changed the makeup of what birds are in the park. Typically this time of year, you're gonna see a lot of um, Great blue herons, a lot of uh, great egrets, some tricolors, some green herons, um, and you will see shorebirds when usually when the tide is is low, or in a few areas on the brackish water side in Mullet Pond that tend to be low in certain areas where there's sandbars or what have you, and those shorebirds will frequent those areas. But right now, the amount of the water level is so low that the shorebirds are everywhere, the semi-palmated plovers, different plovers, different sanderlings, um, black-bellied plovers, uh, you name it, that's the predominant species right now. You could drive across the roadway and look to the right-hand side at the pond and you can maybe count on one hand how many great egrets you see. Uh, today I was there 
from uh, just before seven in the morning till around 10 o'clock and I only saw one great blue heron, just one. This is unheard of, this is unprecedented. Uh, it's, it's awful. I don't know where to place the blame. I can tell you that um, probably well over a dozen photographers have written to the manager of that particular state park. Uh, I personally wrote to the director of state parks. We got, uh, I got an answer from him and we got a canned response that was sent out to everybody who wrote to the manager of the, uh, the actual park. And most of us found the answer to be uh, unacceptable. This is uh, what's going on is being caused by, uh, it's man-made. Uh, there is a rookery in the park, but not this year. There's an area that um, is normally populated with I don't, I don't even know how many, but you know, dozens and dozens, if not a hundred, nesting pairs of great egrets, and there's not even one. There's not one pair in the tree line, in the reeds anymore. Not one this year. Uh, in another area of the park where you normally see nesting green herons, tricolor herons, and anhingas, um, I'm sure there may be a nest around, but I have not yet seen a gr uh, green heron nest or a tricolor nest yet. Um, there are several anhinga nests, and you're going to see some of this in the videos to follow. But the um, everything is in disarray, and it's not just the birds. There, there are things that need to be repaired in the park that are long overdue for repair. Uh, we have gotten uh, confirmation from the park that the money is available and they're awaiting the South Carolina Department of Transportation to come in and do some repairs on the road when you come in and, uh, you know, other, other things that, uh, that they're going to try to take care of. But we really don't know when that's going to happen. So I guess this video is just to show you what was, show you what is, you can draw your own conclusions. For those of you who uh, frequent the park, of which there are thousands, many that come from out of state, many who camp there year round, you know, at some point in time during the year, um, to see the birds. That's a big part of why they come. And um, I've been questioned by many people, what's going on? Why are things the way they are? And I don't really have an answer. And I can say what the canned answer was. Uh, whether I choose to believe it or not, that's obviously up to me. But um, all I know is what I see in front of me. And what I see in front of me isn't very impressive. So I would say to anybody that's looking to go to the park, you know, right now for birding, hold off, wait a while. Uh, nature is great at recovering, even when humans tend to screw things up. Hopefully things will get better in a month or two. Uh, things really usually pick up in the in June time frame. Uh, and let's hope for the best. I'll, I'll leave the name of the, um, the contact information for the manager of the park and the uh, director of parks for South Carolina in case anybody wants to send him an email and ask the same question, where's the birds? And I'll let you make your own determination what you want to do, if anything. I ask you to pass this video along uh, to as many people as you can. I think it's important that if you're a nature lover and you're a photographer, you see things that aren't right, that you voice your opinion, that you're not afraid to do that. Um, and many of us have, and 
we might get nowhere with this battle. We, it, you know, I mean, we're, we're trying to be very polite about it, very professional about it, and, and I don't plan on doing any mudslinging in the video. I'll just let everything speak for itself. And let's hope that things improve. What's wrong with this picture? You're probably saying, I don't see anything wrong with this picture. I see some reeds, I see some trees, I see an occasional bird fly by. We're going to pan a little bit to the right. And now we're going to go to the left. What's wrong with this picture is that normally these trees are a rookery. They're full of great egrets, white birds all around, speckled through these trees. This year, nothing. One has to ask why. Yes, there's an avian flu, from what I hear, but another rookery within less than 20 minutes of this location has a pretty good number of great egrets right now feeding their babies along with great blue herons and some anhinga. This year, at this state park, Nothing. This is a picture that shows part of the rookery by accident in the right hand corner. A little closer to shore, the reeds have been killed off, although there are some signs that they are starting to recover. it's going to take a while before some of this growth comes back. It's just shy of seven in the morning. Usually you would see more hen otherwise known as Galanus, I believe. You'd have some coots. You'd have various species of duck. You'd have a bunch of gators. You'd see something. Right now, you see nothing. There are many issues with this park right now. A good part of it has to do with the lack of birds. Is this sheerly coincidence? Is that due to intervention or bad practices from the management? I don't know. That's for others to decide. Although later on in this video, you're going to see where some of it is directly can be laid on the fault of the management or people that are directing the management to do certain things. There are maintenance issues in this park that shall be discussed and shown. So let us continue. Here are a list of images that of what you normally see this time of year, the green heron, the black crowned night heron, which we did have for a little while, but I don't see it around right now. The great egret, massively reduced in numbers. 
the tricolor herons building nests this uh, is like from the reeds where you saw them uh, dead in the earlier video this is in the front of the reeds and those are least bitterns which you hear a lot but you rarely see them but you could see this is from the same time frame last year Going back to the tricolors, building their nests. Here's a picture of their eggs. Green heron shot. And these are green heron chicks in the nest. Like I said, this is all pictures from May of last year. We even had uh, the presence uh, of a pileated woodpecker and its babies, which was phenomenal. I mean, of course, that you can't expect to be lucky enough to see that every year. They're, they're very well may could be in the park uh, right now. You wouldn't know it. And usually at sunrise over the causeway, which is where you drive in from, you would see birds in flight, which right now you're not seeing very many at all. Here's a ground view or view of where I was shooting from a minute ago. I'm going to show you how unsafe it is where I set up my tripod. You have these large exposed roots all around near this fence where people lean up against it to take pictures of wildlife. And this is Mallard Pond. where you saw no mallards. Here's a view of some nesting anhingas with their young. Now this is the first year since I've been down here where these nests are inhabited just with anhinga. Typically tricolor herons have been shall we say, running the roost in this area. Some anhingas, but you would have tricolor herons. You would have green heron nests, which I will try to find some green heron nests, but normally they're fairly abundant. And I haven't run across any yet, but I will look for some. But you can see the white chick in the nest to the left. Hopefully it'll make a, an appearance where we can see more of it. There we go. So there are some signs of life. Unfortunately, what was the rookery, which as a photographer you never had any areas of access to, which, you know, it is what it is, that's fine. But you would see all those egrets in the background that I showed you before that are not there this year. And we'll go visit an area, what we call the causeway, which overlooks Mullet Pond on one side, which is brackish water, and then Marsh on the opposite side, which obviously is 
saltier because it uh, leads out to the ocean and that water level does rise and fall with the tides whereas Mullet Pond the water level is controlled by several things rainfall and whether or not they choose to open up the gates and on the opposing side, the marsh side, flapper valves to allow the flow of water to go in and or out from the pond. And you could have water flow at high tide. You can bring salt water into the pond. When it's low tide on the marsh side, you could, you could drain or lower the level of mullet pond. And so it works both ways. Unfortunately, the park has dangerously lowered the water level in Mullet Pond, which you shall see in a little while, resulting in horrendous algae blooms, grasses that have overtaken the pond, and a threat to uh, having a fish kill right now, and you'll hardly see any birds there now. Here's a view of some other anhanga nests in the same area where I just showed you, just from a different angle. I'll pan and hopefully pick up another nest here. Here we go. Right now it's, like I said, it's early in the morning. It's 7.10 a.m. It isn't super bright out yet, but getting there. So there's not a lot of activity yet in the nests. That will pick up as it gets a little warmer, as it gets a little brighter. This particular one is not in any hurry to move around, I guess. Here we go. We can get a little bit of a view, better view of the babies on this nest. Still hard, a lot of tree branches in the way. You do the best you can. It's just amazing that the Anhinga chicks are born white with a little bit of black on them. Don't look anything like the parents other than uh, the size of the neck. It's nicknamed the snake bird because of its long, long neck. It pierces fish with those bills. Sometimes it can't shake them off or it can eat them in the water. They get stuck on the bills and it has to swim in to shore so that it can work the fish off of the bill and then swallow it down. And this is one bird that many a time gets, gets fish that are really what you would think are way too big for it to try to swallow. And sometimes they get dangerously close to choking to death on the fish. It could take over a half hour sometimes from the time they have that fish partially in their mouth to get it down because the, the fish isn't stupid. It'll stretch out its dorsal fins and do everything it can to try to make it harder for the bird to swallow it. And it'll basically, as they say, clog the chute, you know. It'll be, I've got pictures of it which I can put into the video of, you know, the fish basically part way down and uh, fighting like heck to not get swallowed 
and uh, it can get stuck down the throat and these birds have to be careful. I mean, it, there is a possibility that they could suffocate. When these young ones feed, literally, they put their heads way, way into the throat of the mother. I mean, you think that alone would cause uh, the mom to choke to death. But it's, it's, it's not just going in a little bit to get some regurgitated food. I mean, they put their, they put their heads very, very far down into the throat of the mom. Now this is the view of Mullet Pond when I turn around from looking at Mallard Pond. And this is kind of the crime scene as I always call it. You can see that car going across. Well, that's the road, we call that the causeway. And that's a road that provides you the exit out of the park. And Mullet Pond, which you're looking at right now, you see that overlook. You see there isn't any water on those support posts. Parts of the pond have been, are so low that yes, it is attracting shorebirds. You know, the semi-palmated plovers and the black-bellied plover, you might see some of those. Uh, plenty of sanderlings. So some would argue, oh, the birds are here. But these aren't the birds that people, they come to see these birds, but they come to see egrets. They come to see great blue herons feeding on eels and fish, uh, eventually wood storks. They come to see the larger birds. There is a, an eagle nest in this park. Right now, I think we're in a situation where it's very dangerous. The water level is so low, as you can see as I pan, I mean these small birds, it's basically grasses and algae. And where you see the, uh, the brush, that water should be a couple feet deep at least, and it's not. It is not. It's pretty, pretty much dried out. Now, the, the few areas that there are, there is some water, unfortunately. That's where all the fish are gonna be, or what's left of them. I haven't seen a fish kill yet, but I'm anticipating one. We get some hot days. It's only a matter of time before the worst happens. Here are some images that give you an indication of what the water level should be. And yeah, I mean, you can see that it's low in some spots, but nowhere near as low as it is now. I mean, here you can see there's plenty of water. Obviously, you have to have some depth in order for the, the birds to dive down and get fish. <clears throat> alligator you can tell I mean there's not a lot of weeds around it or allergy around it the water's pretty clear reasonably uh, deep you can tell from this view 
Okay, do you do you see uh, sandbars in that view? Looks like we had a juvenile yellow crown night heron that's on the same branch as an anhanga. I'll have to double check and make sure this is a yellow crown night heron and not a uh, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Is he in hanging? We have a tricolor heron visiting us. Well, another common issue. Another day, empty feeders, nothing for the birds to eat. Where you are now seeing birds, small birds, plover, sanderlings you would normally not see any of them in this location you are seeing them because the water levels are so ridiculously low in mullet pond normally you would see them at low tide on the opposite side of this causeway and that would be the norm or maybe in this narrow strip of water which is to my left that you can't see would have some in it but not to the level that you have today by any means gee a snowy egret one snowy egret where are the rest let's just say not here Nothing but algae and duck grass. Where are all the birds? That is the question. When you ask, you're told there's thousands of them. All right, they're not lying. Problem is, it's thousands of the wrong types of birds. There should be dozens and dozens and dozens of snowies. There should be a dozen great egrets. There should be a dozen great blue herons. Look at the water line on the pier. That's where the water should be right now. And because it's not, you have what you have. Small birds as far as the eye can see. Probably less than a quarter inch of water that their feet are in right now. be all water around those pilings. Small birds, small birds, and small birds. 
Where are the big birds? Well, we'll tilt up a little farther. You see any big birds? Might be a couple of uh, blue winged teals or ducks out there. Look at the over the other overlook. No water. Right in the middle of those reeds where you see that like empty spot. That's where the fresh water will drain into from Mallard Pond into Mullet Pond when there's a lot of water on the uh, freshwater side. And like I said, this uh, Mullet Pond is supposed to be brackish. You would never see birds where you're seeing them now. This is just showing you what's going on. Scan. Now the gators will swim, will cross the walkway at Mallard Pond and go into this pond. They still are, but it's a lot harder when you don't have a lot of water to swim in. So in many ways, this is a documentary of a travesty. Error in judgment, I don't know. But this is not what this pond is all about. You've got people that come from all different states to come in here to see wildlife. You'll see where the cars come in in a second. There's some visitors. Here's a car leaving the park. You drive in on this road. So right of that car is the marsh. To the left is Mullet Pond. And that structure you see in the right hand corner of the image is an old rice field trunk. It's a gate, it's a control valve, manually operated to allow water to either come in from the saltwater side, which has basically flapper valves on it now. The rice, the trunks got replaced with flapper valves so you can control the water level in this pond and it has been determined by someone to basically in effect drain it. I am shocked that we have not had a fish kill yet. Apparently there's somehow just barely enough water in there for the fish but I would think we get some hot days we're going to have a lot of dead fish floating around. Here's a before and after coming up of uh, where the fresh water would come in from Mallard Pond into Mullet Pond. This is how it looks now. And the next photo is what it looked like this time last year. Now there are some low spots, that's normal, but there's low and then there's very low. This is to the right of where that water would come in. This is the current state. A lot of sandbars, low water level, and this is what it looked like last year. Big difference, that's for sure. Here's an Anhinga on the marsh side.
we'll do a little scan for you so you can see what the marsh side looks like. Apologize for the cars going by, but I am shooting across the road. So that walkway is basic, basically where there is a a building, uh, a nature center that you can go visit, and then you can walk out on that decking and see what's going on at the marsh. So this side obviously changes with the tides. This netting is here basically just to keep people from going over the edge due to storm washout. A lot of the stones got dislodged, it's not very safe, it's one of those things that needs to be repaired and has needed to be repaired for a long time and we're still waiting patiently. Gators are now hanging out in the corner of Mullet Pond where the water is deeper. Heard some action over here. Let's see if we could see what it is. Oh, this gator must have gotten some food. Yep. Crab. Somebody's happy he got something to eat. some other gators closer to the shore but it has rain so we have a little more water at this end that thank goodness nature is taking trying to take care of this place so this is approaching the shore you have the reeds you have some rocks that would normally be full of water foot two feet deep we go a little bit to the right. Let me find this guy. A lot of gators at this end, predominantly at this end of the pond, which still has some water with some depth. Here you're going to see a small gator take off like a rocket, thinking that it found food, but uh, becomes a little bit disappointed in the end. Here we go. It's going to start going now. Just about now. Come on, baby.
Where are you? There you go. Where those conk cones are is where a section of guardrail got taken out more than six months ago. And as you can see, it's still in a state of disrepair. Once again, supposedly the money has been allocated and available. We're waiting for the South Carolina EOT to come and do it. And here's the end of things. This is just some slides showing you images from this time last year, which just show that things were different. Uh, shorebirds didn't have a problem for food. Those are snails that are to the right of the nature center in the marsh section. Plenty of food for small birds. No need to lower the water level of Mullet Pond to satisfy small birds. They've got plenty of places to eat. You can see there's plenty of small birds in these pictures. It's not a problem at all. It has not been a problem. Um, leave things alone. Get the water levels back to where they should be. Try to get the balance back that we used to have in the park. Like I said, these are from last year. On the marsh side, no issues. The other things that require repair is basically the transition between the sidewalk area and the causeway road. You either have complete gaps like this due to washout uh, in, in these pictures that you see. In some cases you have areas where the, the gap between the tar and the sidewalk was poured cement. So you got that in some areas, you got stone in some areas, you got nothing in other areas. It's quite the mess. That needs to get fixed and then that's the washout uh, behind the mesh to keep you from falling down the embankment well these are the people that you can contact if you wish to if you're a native down here and you agree with some of my comments write to these people and complain I apologize for everybody to have to do a video like this but I felt it was necessary Take care. Have a good day. God bless. Goodbye.